Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omnus and today I will review the fourth studio album by the virtual rock band Gorillaz. Yeah, I am a huge fan of the Gorillaz. Uh, whenever I initially reviewed them, I was kind of you know iffy on them. I was kind of like, eh, you know, they're trip hop and they have rap in them. You know, De La Soul and all those other guys, MF Doom. I do really like those guys now. I do. Um, I would almost call myself a fan, but I don't know enough about them. But if they would be requested, I might do them. And Gorilla's fourth studio album was requested by Pawn Arts. He requested some more, I believe, King Gizzard and you know all that shit. But you know, I was mostly interested in the Gorillas because um, you know I shared a playlist with him, and I was like, oh, they're they're amazing. I love them now. Well, I will probably always love them. You know, at least they're. Early stuff, you know, from 2001 and 2010, that window of material, I will always love that. But, you know, after the fall, they kind of fell apart, you know, s s uh, no album for seven years, half a decade. It's like a tool release, but, you know, kind of uh, lackluster, I would say. Not this album necessarily, I do still have a personal love for this album, but it's definitely not on par with the first three, I can tell you that. I'm a huge Demon Days, Plastic Beach guy. I love those albums. I can listen to those albums for days. Um, and I love the self-title too. Really like atmospheric, really chill album to listen to, you know. Just fucking, really fucking cool album. But you know, the Demon Days and Plastic Beach, that was the best Gorillaz era. Phase 2 and 3 respectively. And I think that, you know, The Fall, it's kind of falls under the umbrella of a B-side album, or in Gorilla's cases, or in the Gorilla Gorilla's case, G and D sides, which you know, G is Gorilla self-titled, and D sides is Demon Days, which I think are two great compilation albums. So if you want me to to review those as well, I can do that because I love this band. Um, and you know, you have also Space Monkeys, Like I Come Home, which is like a remix dub reggae album, which I also plan to get because it's in that 2001 2010 era. But I will, you know, I will not sidetrack any further than that because you know, you can clearly tell I'm a fan of this band because I do scope them out quite a lot, you know, in that window 2001 up until 2010. I think that their last two albums are not really for me personally, they're just kind of too generic, I think. Um, whereas this album, it's not generic, I think. It is at least special, you know. Humans kind of panders a little bit too much to the mainstream uh, era, I think, to the mainstream in general. Whereas this album still, it's still in that window of it sounds unique. But the the biggest problem with this album is, is that, you know, the Gorillaz really work as a virtual band because you really, you know, you have to these vocals, you have... Russell's and Murdoch's bass, uh, drum and bass, respectively, really brings the best out of this band. That's, um, you know, that's those virtual characters connecting with each other and Noodle, of course, kind of, you know, being the guitarist of the band. Pretty basic uh, guitarist, I would say, but she does a great job on all the tracks. And, you know, she was really on her peak with, uh, with Dare, you know, from Demon Day. She had a lot of character and passion thrown in there and fucking. Empire Ends, which arguably one of my all-time favorite tracks. I fucking love that song. But um, she had a lot of character there, but there's not really a soul noodle track on there, which is kind of disappointing, I think, because I love I love a solo noodle track like There and uh, Empire Ends, which are two of my all-time favorite songs. So uh, we have 15 tracks on there. Um, yeah, I might as well talk about all of them because all of the gorillas. We have Phoner to Arizona, which is, um, it kind of sounds like Dare to me, kind of has that, uh, you know, that farty opening sound throughout the whole track, or throughout the whole track in general. N not a problem with that, it does sound, um, I think, nice, but, you know, it can be annoying for a person that hates that sound, and it goes out throughout the whole song. But I don't mind it that much, to be honest, really chill vibe, really, uh, you know, uh, brings out the album really nicely. Opens up the album pretty good, I would say, and yeah, I would call it a favorite of mine. It's uh, pretty relaxing, pretty, you know, gives me a lot of dare kind of vibe, but without Sean Ryder, which, you know, was Noodle essentially, so there you go. Then we have Revolving Doors, which is, yeah, it's kind of a basic bitch choice, but I think it's my favorite song on the album. It has a really nice kind of 
Hawaiian beach kind of opening um, acoustic guitar to it, or yeah, how do you say it? An uh, ukulele, I believe. That's a ukulele, I believe, at the beginning. Or it's just an acoustic guitar, but it sounds like a ukulele to me. Uh, yeah, it probably is that, you know, the, the guitar that you use at the beach. I believe that's a ukulele. But um, it sounds nice, it sounds really pleasant to the ears. Uh, to these vocals are really nice, really blend in with the, with the ukulele. If that is the case, if it isn't, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I really like this song, it's uh, really nice, pleasant to listen to, it's three and a half minutes long, so um, it could have been a radio hit if this album was a bit, you know, if it was supported a bit better, but you know, it still is a Gorillaz album, so I'll take it. Then we have Hillbilly Man, which was a really pleasant song as well, featuring Mick Jones, who is, I believe, a Clash member. Uh, there is one guy on there, which is a Clash member, I know that, or that, you know, they, they fucking say that here, so... Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think Mick Jones is a Clash member, and I do like the Clash, so I fuck with that. Not as much as the Gorillas, you know, call me dumb, but I, I like the Gorillas more than the Clash, so there you go. But uh, Hillbilly Man, a really nice song, really pleasant, kind of gives a punk vibe to me because of Mick Jones. Um, it's it's kind of killing me right now. Is Mick Jones from the Clash? Um, no. Oh yeah, yeah, songwriter of the Clash. Uh, until 19, 1983, so he was like in the shitty um, fucking. I'm not even sure how this album is called again, but that shitty album that they did, and then they, uh, you know, they died, so there you go. Oh, and he's also a member of the Gorilla since the fall. Alright, Mick Jones. Uh, welcome to the club, man. Good to have you, good song. Uh, I do think he composed it pretty nicely, featuring Mick Jones, so there you go. Um, yeah, I like it. It's three, uh, nearly four minutes long. Um, keeps the momentum of the album going, and I think it's an overall good track. Then we have Detroit, which was kind of an interlude kind of song, but no song on here is credited as an interlude, so I will take it as a normal song. Really nice production. I really like the kind of organ, the, the keyboard sound that Detroit is, which is, you know, it's essentially an, a keyboard instrumental, but it's not labeled as such so there's probably one 2d vocal in there i don't remember the vocal but i do like the sound it's not necessarily a favorite of mine because it's you know it was just a rather uh a rather guess but it is definitely a nice one to listen to really pleasant then we get shy town which is actually one of anthony fantana's favorite songs of the album i believe this song and one song later on i believe yeah yeah near the ending so uh shy town was really nice i do really like the kind of um shy and kind of poetic nature of the song it sounds really pleasant it uh you know i do like the lyrical content a lot as well talking about a lot of insecurities and just uh has a kind of doom and gloom kind of sound to it sprinkled in with that nice jolly plastic beach kind of sound which you know this record is essentially a a, plas a plastic beach b-side but it's not labeled as such it's it's labeled as an actual studio album so i'll take it but I think I think it would be better if this album was just labeled as a um, as a you know the B sides album like they did with oh wait that doesn't make any sense because it is an actual B sides album but you know it's also Pleasant Beach so that doesn't make any sense because D sides and G sides and B sides would be the actual B sides album but you know that's not the Gorillaz gimmick you, you you know do you understand what I'm saying it doesn't match because G and D sides is a joke because it's a B sides album, but it's yeah, you know. I, I think you get it, and if you don't, you really don't give a shit, I think, but uh, you know, it doesn't work, so there you go. So, I guess make a studio album out of it. Um, yeah, good song, I really like it. It's probably one of my favorites, but not my absolute favorite song, but it, but it is up there, I would say. Little Pink Plastic Bags is uh, kind of the same as Detroit, but it goes on for a bit longer, and it has a lot of like really eerie production styles i would say really um you know it's kind of a make or break record for you i think that i will like the song with a bit more listens i think i've heard this album like three or four times right now but i do think that the song is interesting but it is very you know it's it's a very polarizing song i would say that definitely this album gets a bit more uh disjointed and a bit more heavy on the ears on the second side, which is kind of hard to stomach, I would say, but I still like it, so do whatever you want. 
Then we have the Joplin Spider, which is easily my least favorite song on the album. Uh, this is really where the album just takes kind of a nosedive, I would say, and really um, has a really blasting kind of ear rape production kind of sound, especially the, the beginning, the, the middle section. And it, it is a bit more pleasant to listen to in the ending, but you can't hear that because it fucking blasts your ears open in the first one two minutes. So uh, this is definitely my least favorite song on the album. It's very polarizing. It's uh, it's a very unpleasant song to listen to in general. Maybe some parts were nice, but I do definitely think that you could have removed this song and no one would have given given a shit. So there you go. Now we have the Pairs of Space Dust, which was a very interesting song again, two and a half minutes long. It does kind of remind me of Detroit again, but you know it has I think a better title. It's a bit more interesting. It's a bit more immersive, I would say. Uh, there's just a bit more variety going on with this track, so I do like that, but you know, it's not very different from the track, but I still like it. Now we have The Snake in Dallas, which was actually a really uh, good song, I think. Very interesting, kind of uh, loner-ish, again, kind of doom and gloom sounding. really like this track, it, uh, you know, it definitely could have been a bit longer, you know, the I do think that... You know, uh, this album could have been better if some songs were just combined and you took the best bits from those songs and you would have made one great song. But I do think that this works as well, I think, but it could have been worked out differently, but it's still good, I guess. Now we have Amarillo, which is another one of my favorite tracks. Uh, it has a really cool sound to it. Um, it's not my absolute favorite track on the album because it does have some kind of, you know, ear rapey songs here and there or some moments i would say but i still think this is this is a very iconic song for the band arguably their last uh great song debatably but you know i do like i do like some songs from humans though i do like i do really love andromedia andromedia yeah i believe it's called andromedia i do really love that song but you know one great song yeah i'm not gonna buy the album just for one great song so there you go that's kind of it honestly but um, I would probably buy this album though, because there are a lot of songs that I really love from, from this uh, album, so there you go, Amarillo included. Then we have the Speak It Mountains, which I actually kind of forgot existed. Um, you know, not, not to insult the song or anything, but I do I did kind of forget the song honestly, you know, not that it's bad or anything, but I definitely kind of forgot it, so there you go. Uh, yeah, not, not bad, but you know, I can't really remember it again, it did kind of sound like um, the next song, the uh, Aspen Forest. Um, and for right now, I'm gonna say this is my favorite song of the album, and arguably one of my top 10 favorite Gorilla songs. I love the vibe of this song. I do like Speak It Mountains too because it kind of builds up to Aspen Forest. But I love this song because it's um, it just has such a nice melancholic tone to it. It kind of reminds me of On Melancholy Hill and Empire and kind of like the soft ballad-ish kind of songs. I do really love those songs from Plastic Beach. Uh, I love a lot of Plastic Beach songs. I mean, that album is fucking near flawless, I would say. There are some songs that annoy me, but... Uh, but this song is really amazing as well. I do think that this could have been on Plastic Beach, but it still is on the Gorillaz album, so I'm still happy. Uh, featuring Paul Simonen, I'm not sure who that is, but it, you know, Simone reminds me of the, the Simone song of uh, the self-titled album, which is one of my least favorite songs of that album. I love I love the self-titled Gorillaz album, but that song I'm not very fond of, let's, let's say that. But I love Aspen Voice, it has a great atmosphere, great melancholic vibe, reminds me kind of... Jesus Christ, my cat is looking fucking vicious at me. Like he wants to fucking, he wants to destroy my face or something. God damn, that was a scary look. <laughs> I was really distracted by that, but um, yeah, great song, I think, I really love it. Uh, I love the ending vibe, where that's kind of like a very ukulele again, kind of an acoustic, you know, guitar at the ending with some really nice atmospheric, you know, there's a great atmosphere in the ending. Really fucking love the ending of the song. Could listen to that for fucking days um yeah so amazing song i love aspen forest now we got bobby in phoenix which is uh, i believe anthony fantana's favorite song on the album it has a lot of like in your face kind of production so i do get why he likes he really likes this song because it's really in your face it pulls no punches it's kind of like a no bs song uh it's definitely a favorite of mine as well i would say it's really ear catchy and it's really nice to listen to <coughs> But, you know, um, well, but. 
And they're actually really like the song, so I don't really have a but against it. Some people might say this album is ass, but I, I really like it, so. Bobby and Phoenix was really nice, kind of reminds me of the early side of the record again. Kind of goes a bit more soft, more, you know. It is still a bit heavy-handed, I would say. Still a bit heavy on the production, but I did really like the song. And I think, you know, Bobby Womack does a great job on this record. And I think he was on Plastic Beach as well. Or maybe that was another guy. And then he passed away. I believe that was Bobby Womack. He did Plastic Beach and The Fall, I believe, with Gorillaz. And then he passed away. God bless his soul, even though I don't know him, but you know, still, God bless him. Even though I'm an atheist, but that doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> um, the 14th track, which is essentially the final song of the album, which is California and the Slipping of the Sun. Um, I have to be honest here, these last couple of tracks didn't really, uh, or you know, this last track and the, the, the actual final song, which is not really a final song. Didn't really catch my ear all that much to be honest. I did kind of slip off after Bobby and Phoenix and these last two tracks I guess didn't really catch my ear. I think that's California and the slipping of the sun was just kind of like you know Damon Albarn giving up on this album essentially because he was like oh I did a great job on Aspen Forest and Bobby and Phoenix so why would I continue right here but he did still did continue on this um, with these tracks and I think you really could have could it at Bobby and Phoenix or maybe in Aspen Force and you could have had a better album, I think, but yeah, you, you know, I mean, they st they're still on air and I don't mind them. Uh, I don't mind this track. Uh, Seattle Yodo is fucking trash though. I mean, can, can I really consider this a track because it's literally just like a banjo and like some dumb mouth breathing hillbilly like saying she had all your do and, and that, that's kind of it honestly like i don't really consider it as a track but it's still on air so i guess it's my least favorite track on the album so seattle yodo and the joplin spider are my least favorite tracks on the album but as in an actual track the joplin spider is my least favorite track and you know seattle yodo i think is like the worst thing gorillas has ever recorded so you know together with uh rocket um, you know, I still like the music video for it though, for, for Rocket, but Rocket is fucking trash. Um, you know, even me being a hardcore Gorillaz fan, Gorillaz fan, I still, like that song is fucking trash, but I'll probably still have it on my playlist because it is a music video by them, but I mean, I have to be very, I have to, be, I have to have a lot of acid in my system to say that's a good song. But there you go, I still like some trashy songs like Rocket, but you know, there you go. Seattle Yodo is fun, but you know, it's not really a song. And if it is, it is easily my least favorite song on the album, together with the Joplin Spider. So overall, I still think this is a really good album. I still think that the first six songs, five, six songs are really good. Little Pink Plastic Bags is definitely kind of middle of the road for me, but still has a lot of great moments. Then the album kind of takes a nosedive, but it still has some really great moments like the Snake in Dallas, Amarillo. Uh, Speak of Mountains is kind of growing on me. Aspen Force was really amazing. Bobby Phoenix. And I do think that the last two tracks are kind of balls. So there you go. Uh, but overall, I do think that, you know, still like eight or nine out of the 15 tracks are still really, really good songs in my opinion. Still really memorable, really catchy Gorillaz tracks. So I would still give this album a good rating, I think. I still would give it like... I'm going to give it a higher rating than the Muse album. <laughs> I'm going to piss off a lot of people, but I don't give a shit. But, you know, I'm a huge Gorillaz fan, and I don't give a shit about Muse. So, there is a little bit of bias here. Otherwise, I would score the Muse album way higher than I would do this album. So, I will probably give this album a... Mm, I'm struggling, you know, something in the 8 range. I'm struggling between an 8.2 and an 8.4. Because there are some really great moments on this album, but there are also some really shitty ones, so... Uh, what should I give it? Um, oh, well, I'm gonna do this, just to piss off Muse fans. I'm gonna give this album an 8.1. I'm gonna give it a rating because I gave, I gave the Absolution album an 8. So, I, I, I'm saying that this album is slightly better than Absolution. Which is like the best Muse album, this is like the worst Gorillaz album, so... I still, I, my cat got scared there. I still think that Gorilla's lowest low. I still think that Gorilla's lowest point is still better than Muse high points. But you know, original symmetry, I gave like an eight point five. So, I you know, I guess Muse is still they still come out of, on top of this record. But this is like the lowest point of Gorilla's, and I still like this all more than I do than I do a Muse record. So there you go. 
Do it what you will, but I'm biased as fuck. I, I don't give a shit. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel for free this live one. Let me know what you think about this album and gorillas in general. I love them. Let me know what you think about them, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.